Kim McIntosh and I teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School in Phoenix, Arizona. And this video is about the cell structure. So first we're going to talk about the discovery of cells. Cells were first discovered in the 1600s. Um, very simple microscopes, um, really just kind of magnifying glasses but more powerful scopes in the 1800s led to the formation of cell theory. And cell theory is composed of three ideas. So first, all living things are composed of one or more cells. So this is a plant cell, okay? And all living things, so like this plant, would be made of plant cells. Here's an animal cell and every living thing that's an animal would be made up of animal cells. So like this rabbit is made up of lots of these cells. The second part is that the cell is the smallest unit of life. So here we have a cell and we would consider this cell alive because it does what living things do. It needs to um, have energy, it metabolizes that energy, it moves, um, and there's some other things that it does that tell us that it is actually alive. If we broke this down any smaller, like say we just took one of the component parts of it, that wouldn't be alive. It wouldn't meet that criteria for life. And then the third thing is that all living things arise from pre-existing living cells. So we would have one cell and it would reproduce and create more cells. So all new cells have to come from a pre-existing cell. And this is a very basic idea for us because we can think about this in terms of, well, every living animal has to have come from its parent. All right, there's different kinds of cells. So we have um, different shapes of cells. In the upper left-hand corner here, you see a blood cell. The upper right-hand corner, you see a plant cell. And you can see that they're a different shape. Down at the lower left-hand side, that's a muscle cell. You notice how long it is? It looks completely different from those other cells. And on the right-hand bottom side, you see a nerve cell. And again, it looks completely different from these other three types of cells. All right, we're going to talk about the cell surface to volume ratio. And what this is, um, because all substances that enter or leave the cell have to cross the surface of the cell, we talk about this surface to volume ratio. So if we have a small cell like this, it has a certain volume inside, right? And the surface area would be this outer area. If we have a large cell, we have that volume inside, and then this outer part here would be the surface area. The thing is that this, the ratio would be different. So in the small cell, this surface area around here is larger than the volume of the cell. And that makes it more efficient. A really large cell like this, well, this surface area around the outside is not as large compared to the volume inside. And so that makes it less efficient. And this is really why we don't have huge blob cells. Yeah, because cells are more efficient if they're small. And that's why we see most cells are rather small. All right, so all cells have common structural features. So whether the cell is a prokaryote or a eukaryote, whether it's an animal cell or a plant cell, we see certain features that they all have in common. And the first one is the cell membrane. So the cell membrane provides a barrier between the inside and the outside of the cell. So the cell membrane would basically be this outside part of the cell. All cells have cytoplasm. That's the region in the cell, like you see right here where there's no organelles. Well, that would be cytoplasm. It's like the gel or the fluid inside the cell. 
The next thing is the cytoskeleton, and this is the internal framework. And so we'll see that there are some small organelles that will maintain the cytoskeleton, they maintain the shape of the cell. And then ribosomes, these are um, generally shown as the little dots in here, but ribosomes make proteins. And then DNA provides instructions. So all cells, no matter what type they are, have these five things in common. All right, I mentioned prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, so now let me tell you what those are. Prokaryotic cells, they're bacteria. So prokaryotes, you'll see that right here. This is a prokaryotic cell, and it's bacteria. Every prokaryote is bacteria, okay? And then we have the eukaryotic cells. This one happens to be an animal cell, but plants are eukaryotic cells, um, protists, single-celled organisms, um, animal cells, they're all eukaryotic. So in fact, if it's not a bacteria, it's a eukaryote cell. All right, organelles. Organelles are small structures. They're found inside the cytoplasm of the cell. And so anytime we talk about these, we'll, and we wanna talk about them in general, we'll call them organelles. So we'll say this organelle does one thing and that organelle does another thing. Each one of them has a distinct function. And this complex organization of the cell, having all of these different organelles doing different jobs, that allows cells to specialize. So think about your blood cells and your brain cells and your bone cells. They're very different and they have specialized functions. Right, so I'm gonna go through a few of these different types of cells and show you um, some more detail about them. We're gonna start with the prokaryotic cell. So like I said, these are bacteria. They, um, they all have DNA. So they'll have a coil of DNA inside. So you can see this one that my cursor is hovering over. This is a, a long strand of DNA, um, but they don't have a nucleus. So that's a hugely important part of prokaryotes. No nucleus. Um, they do have cyto cytoplasm and they do have a, a cell wall to protect the cell. They have something called pili and this helps them to um, hold on to surfaces and then it also helps in sexual conjugation because they reproduce asexually. These over here are called flagella and they help it to move. And this over here is called a mesosome. All right, so this is a permeable boundary. This allows nutrients in and out. And then you see the ribosomes and this is where the protein is made. So similar to eukaryotes, but this is a prokaryote, it's bacteria, and the biggest clue that it's a prokaryote cell is it, no nucleus. So you look at this and you say, oh, this cell doesn't have a nucleus, definitely a prokaryote. Next, we're gonna look at an animal cell. So here we have the animal cell, and what we wanna do when you're trying to remember all of these organelles that you're gonna be responsible for, you gotta, you gotta make a mental map. Okay, it can't be vague. This isn't like when somebody says, oh, how do you get to your friend's house? And you say, oh, I don't know. I've been there a hundred times. I'm not really sure. I, I know it when I'm there, you know, um, because somebody else has always taken you or you ride your bike, you're not really paying attention. You just get there. Well, we want you to make a mental map here of this cell structure. So you're gonna have to focus in, like you really need to know where these organelles are and make your own mental map. And so you wanna kind of look at the relationship of the organelles to each other and that will help you remember. So the first thing we start with is the nucleus because it's the largest thing in the cell. This is where the DNA is stored. And so when you, as soon as you spot the nucleus, you're gonna say, oh, this is a eukaryote cell because it has a nucleus. And then we kind of move out from there and we have what's called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, if you say that, it's kind of fun to say, but 
the rough endoplasmic reticulum is where ribosomes bind for the protein synthesis. So it's, it's called rough because it's, it has these little dots all over it. And so those are the ribosomes and it looks rough. Now from there, we go out here and we'll look at the mitochondria. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's where the energy is metabolized, where the ATP is made. So when we're trying to remember what mitochondria does, a lot of times we'll say the mighty mitochondria because it's where the power is. All right, we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum out here. And this is a transport system for the liquids and the nutrients inside of the cell. We have lysosomes, um, lysosomes and peroxisomes, they are actually, they break down things in the cell. So they really are responsible for getting rid of wastes. Looking at the cytoplasm, so there's always that fluid gel, you know, that's inside the cell that all these organelles are in. Here's a fun one, this is the Golgi apparatus. And the Golgi apparatus, it secretes waste products from the cell. The Golgi apparatus is, um, it's also responsible for labeling proteins and then they will get transported to the right place. Plant cell is a little bit different from the animal cell, but does have some of the same structures. So you can very quickly see that there's a nucleus. You look and you see that really large structure and you say, oh, that's a eukaryote, it has a nucleus. And this is a plant cell and we can tell that because we can look right here at this cell wall. All right, we see that definite defined border that is a cell wall in plants. A lot of plant cells look like tiny bricks when you look at them under the microscope because they have that cell wall. Another thing we notice right away is there's chloroplasts and these are green. And so we look at those and we know they have to be chloroplasts and that's where photosynthesis is done. It's converting the light energy into chemical energy, making it into ATP. But we also notice not just chloroplasts for that energy production, but we also notice that it has mitochondria too. So there's, there's still mitochondria. We still have, and there's the smooth. So we have both rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. We also have Golgi apparatus. Here we have this huge vacuole. Okay, so this um, stores nutrients and water, and we don't see this in an animal cell, but we see this in plant cells. So on the plant cell, we see three things that we don't see in animal cells. We see a cell wall, we see a vacuole, and we see chloroplasts.